Hello, good afternoon. How are you all? Um, thanks for having me here. That was a great introduction, Simon, uh, who is a fine poet in his own right. He forgot to mention that. Um, I remember publishing your work, was it a decade ago? Yeah, so look him up as well. Um, you could be out strolling in the park, but here you are in a cultural space. Well done to all of you. Um, I have to confess, last time I came into this room, there was a conference going on, and um, I pretended I was part of it for five minutes, just walking around and uh, admiring the space, never thinking that I might be reading here soon after. Um, I get to the Whitworth as, soon, as, as often as I can. Last time, in fact, how many of you might have seen the Goya? Yeah, a few of you are nodding with Hogarth, brilliant exhibition, beautifully curated, um, contextualizing Goya's work in our current moment as well with things like Brexit. Oh no, I've mentioned the word. Um, what I've done is, as Simon has, has alluded to there, I've, I've, um, I've followed Goya. I don't think of it in terms of a crisis necessarily, uh, more of a, um, in Spanish, the word dialogo, a conversation, a dialogue with Goya. Um, now, um, very briefly, if you don't know, just before he worked on the Caprichos in 1794, he went completely um, deaf, and no one knows quite why. Um, this work was uh, highly controversial, and King Ferdinand, after it was published in 1799, realized how scandalous it was, and uh, banned the entire Caprichos manuscript. Um, it's scandalous because it attacks uh, the aristocratic center of power, it attacks the monarchy and the uh, Catholic Church. This was a time of public inquisitions in Spain. Um, so, these images show the terror of power, of violence, of social struggle. And I suppose I was thinking about our own age and, and certain parallels. So, uh, these dialogues also attempt, I would say, and somebody mentions this on the back cover, um, Nar McDevitt said this is a setting of Goya to music, and I really enjoyed Catherine's set there. You know, the musical ear, I think, is really important for um, my approach to poetics and my appreciation of other poets, so thank you, Catherine. So this is a kind of a, a musical score as well. Okay, I'll get on with it. The first one is, um, is what you're going to be hearing in the second half set to music. So I have no idea what you've done, Alex and Hannah, but thank you. I look forward to hearing it. These are written as octaves, so very quick, 30 second poems, and I'm just gonna dash through as many as I can and interrupt myself occasionally. The titles are all Goyas from the original Prado manuscript. Nobody knows himself. Wear a face to look more like yourself. Clothes, flesh and voice are all false. I am the mystery occasioned as myself, compound volatile sewn at the mouth. Look me in the eye, and I am elsewhere. I sleep, silent as ink. Ancestral breath blows clean the curtain. Dreams are embroidered from people that exist. Love and death. The mind spars like darkness inside a lighthouse. A battery field flashes. A corporal laughs at the undrawn sword, and the corpse that has begun to speak through me drinks the breath from my mouth. Hold me closer. The world outside falls to pieces between men. We live divisible, as if on a threshold. This, this image from Goya has 
somebody who is taken through the streets, one would presume, during an inquisition, and they're wearing the inquisitional dunce hat, as people would often refer to it, this tall, tall hat in their hands, their wrists are bound, and I was very struck by this image um, for what was in the foreground, but also what was in the background, a host of people who were just uh, not preventing things from change, from changing. So, so there's a bit of, bit of both here, foreground, background, and I also mentioned Tyburn, which most of you I'm sure will know, uh, it's now called Marble Arch, it was the place of, of public in, uh, executions in London. <coughs> Nothing could be done about it. Like a lancer in the back cloth, you act up by doing nothing. Shame. Bound to fuel the hoarded lot into a gallery of swingers at Tyburn. Boredom, flashball, distraction. Yet your roots still pant with blood. You decide, humility or humiliation, a donkey honk of shit or of pride. Why hide them? To avarice pocketing a pouch sack, to treasuries buried under numerals, money disappears into hair cracks like a lizard scuttling into a wall. Old man, face racked by the sea, buried under this great depression. Living is a lack, what's owed is illusory. The banker smirks like a sovereign. Um, Allen Ginsberg wrote a poem, I think when he was something like 23, very un-Ginsberg-like poem, I'm just going to tell you it, if I can remember. Um, the weight that we carry is love. Under the burden of dissatisfaction and solitude, the weight, the weight that we carry is love. And I, I took a riff from that line, as well as corresponding with the Goya image. Um, and it's acknowledged at the back of the poem, but I was thinking about, again, about power. In this image from Goya, there are there's lots of uh, donkeys. There's a whole host of donkeys throughout these images. And in this particular image, there's two donkeys who have jumped on the back of these two men and they're carrying them around. Thou who canst not. As if the weight that we carried were love, not a pocket of silver, Blood shadow rivers in white sand is whispered at the buccaneer's ear by King Ferdinand. Eighty Maravedis for the price of a cavalry, a peninsula. On their backs, the sign of the beast, the profiteer that relies on war. So, um, I've, I've tracked Goya around um, different galleries, including this one. I bought the t-shirt, this is the, 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 the most famous Los Capichos, which you've probably seen, the sleep of reason produces monsters. Um, somebody uh, over their desk and there's this fantastical kind of aviary of birds behind him and he's sleeping. Uh, in, in this, I decided it wasn't enough to track Goya, I was reading some Milton at the time, and Milton, I've realized, has had predicted the arrival of Donald Trump, the American president. So you'll see, you'll hear the Trump line, the prediction from Milton, and I suppose it's important, for me at least, to remember with this one that I wrote it on the day of our now much contested referendum. The sleep of reason produces monsters. Now that the state legitimizes hate, a wakeful trump of doom thunders valley deep. Where are the Blakes and Miltons now? Crisis of mirrors 
where my neighbor reasons only with himself, a hissing face, chained to sleep in a star's coda. A fantasy that whatever is pure is England. Okay, a few more. Just, I'll just read this one. It's called Hobgoblins. It's probably a good thing you can't see this image. It's one of the most gruesome. Hobgoblins. Another kind of people, hobgoblins, the minds of little men. No bunion fiend is he who frightens a maiden of ancient privilege. Happy as no one but a freak. Hand of puck who jokes, sweetly unfree to sweeten a dukedom. The wrong face in the oldest village is another face. A goblin is no Athenian. Until death. Mirror mirrors queen and spinster, death as complexion. Skin's obelisk shatters like fire, and the prettier titter like prittig, cunning, or pritter, trick. Arsonists at the candling of birthdays, thorns in the aureole. You will not die standing up for something as the trees do, as she who is la madre de la muerte. Okay, a couple more. This is, um, yeah, read three, three more. Um, around the time I was writing this one, uh, the there was a lot in the news about Harvey Weinstein, and so uh, a lot of these poems, I, I hope, offer solidarity with the Me Too movement. But in particular, I was thinking about Weinstein at the moment, and of course, now we know he's starting to try and pay off people and with some success uh, to keep them quiet. So, yeah, I think that's all you need to know. Look how solemn they are. Choose not I or you, but she with him. Hollywood likes it under a barcode sky, best of all. Insert possessive pronoun here. Raptorial cackle, the predatory cock snook squats on her back. The sun says nothing, sinking into a white cloud made of bone. He tells her, tell no one. If you are my friend, I am your friend. Okay, so I'm going to come out of the, the darkness to, to read a couple of the lighter ones to close. And I uh, just want to say, really good to see Sasha as well. Looking forward to hearing you read, dear friend. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. These, these last two, I suppose you could conceive of them, even though they're quite strange uh, in terms of the original Goya engraving. But um, I was hoping to... I suppose transcend the again the literal context and and think of of uh, my my wife actually so these are both dedicated to Sandy and there you are. Pretty teacher mentions Mina Loy, one of the great British poets of the last hundred years, I think. Pretty teacher, teach me to sing your skin's music, black orchard of hair on my shoulder. A thin hand silking the nape of my neck. Is it touch or pulse or something closer than either? Loy called it electro life. How an owl's vigilance wakes the nest of my sleep. How I know you as flight. How I have flown because you exist. And the last one, the last poem in the book. Um, yeah, this is called It Is Time. With a grimace, then, to go without inhaling the sun. But I served my time. I swallowed the jailer's key in my mouth. Now the fire sign rises. It's only old men who shriek in the flames. 
I'm not like them. When I close my eyes, they open on you, bright in the Puerta del Sol. Bell chimes, ten in the morning. Silencio, silencio, silencio. Thank you.